Hi everyone, welcome to another exciting episode. The very first book review of 2019. I recently read, actually last year, The Silver Surfer Omnibus from Dan Slott and Mike Allred. This thing is a beauty. Now, if you are not accustomed to omnibuses, basically, it's just all the issues bundled up together. In this case, this has uh, material from all new Marvel Now Point One and uh, the 2014 Silver Surfer series, which was 15 issues, and then the whole rebranding, uh, Silver Surfer, the 2016 series, uh, 1 through 14. Silver Surfer is a character that, for the longest of times, was always this Shakespearean, tragic, cosmic figure that attracted a lot of readers. The character has gone through uh, uh, the ringer and he has been a part of so many epic Marvel cosmic storylines that it's a little daunting to just go ahead and say, hey, here's this uh, standalone material that you can read for Silver Surfer or, or a character that is so prose heavy and, and he's so dramatic and, and just, uh, I don't know. I, I, there's a weight to this character, of course. Uh, his sacrifice and being a herald of Galactus and then rebelling and now just uh, protecting the universe and making amends for his sins and all that stuff for being part of massive uh, galactic genocide, if you will, and, and cosmic annihilation and all that stuff. Those are some heavy themes. So the character for the most part has always been rather stoic, serious, and kind of unapproachable. Like, I get it. Uh, there's no problem with the character being like this, but it's not the go-to for uh, new readers. Like, they're not gonna go, oh yeah, I totally want to start with a character like this. Usually it takes them a little while. Fortunately, uh, Marvel had the bright idea to get Dan Slott, who was writing uh, Spider-Man at the time, to helm this uh, mini what would be a mini-series on Silver Surfer, and getting the right pick to helm a book like this in the Allreds, of course, Mike Allred and his wife, Laura Allred. This team is awesome, this story is spectacular, and the series does so much in so little time. I was really impressed from the get-go. One, the art in it is just stunning, it's beautiful. I love Michael Allred's art, it is so detailed and fun to look at with its um, nostalgic, uh, 60s and 70s uh, pop-ish influence and all that stuff. I love looking at Allred's art and and, and Just the bright idea of taking a character that are, that was so serious and breaking him down to a more human Level where we can have fun with this title We can go on journeys and explore the universe and it doesn't have to be this operatic symphony It can just be a really cool sci-fi adventure, man. You're surfing the cosmic waves and having fun seeing all these wonderful uh, creations of, of planets and alien creatures and uh, scientific concepts and exploring with like metaphysics and Mobius strips and all that stuff. It, it, it's a thing of beauty, man. Uh, Dan is able to... I see a lot of people make the comparison like uh, this is sort of like a Whovian... Uh, Silver Surfer tale, where uh, you have uh, the character of Silver Surfer and, um, you know, taking a human companion and going on many adventures and all that stuff. I, I don't know, I'm not a fan of Doctor Who, sorry, I know, I'm, 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 I am a fool, but whatever. Uh, I guess the similarities are there, but it was, to me, it was something much more than that. It was a story, one, it was about family. Two, it's about the bonds that make us and, and just just the splendor of life and how we can just celebrate it through the simplest of means. And if you've read the finale, you probably know what I'm hinting at. And it basically starts off with Surfer being whisked away to this uh, improbable place in the multiverse that has hidden away from threats, from cosmic threats and uh, Surfer is to be their champion, to fight against the Never Queen, if you will. Uh, the, the embodiment of all the possibilities that uh, have been, are, and will be in the universe. And, 
we later find out that everybody in the in Paracon thing has an ulterior motive and they each, everybody that's summoned there has a champion. They are summoned, not only are they summoned to uh, the resort slash planet, uh, well technically it's not really a planet, but whatever. Uh, they are also summoned with a companion of sorts or somebody that that person values the most and will fight for. Uh, to defend uh, and whatnot, and uh, Surfer gets uh, Dawn Greenwood, this human character that we've never seen before. And you're thinking, like, how is Surfer, uh, you know, they're not really related or anything, they don't know each other, but they will, and that's sort of the thing. And Surfer, at the beginning of the story, he mentions it like, I am a defender for, all, for everybody and all the people of Earth and all that stuff. But later on, uh, through really specific motions, we learn that it's more than that. That these characters are destined uh, to meet and and be together, if you will. So that stuff happens. I'm not gonna go further, and because I want you guys to read it. But the story takes a very interesting turn after these events. The character of Dawn, she's always been a little bit stagnant without noticing or without knowing why. She lives in a little bed and breakfast in New England near the beach on a shoreline and it's really cool. She lives with her dad and she uh, helps him run the bed and breakfast and all that stuff. And it's a very uh, somewhat, I should say, popular uh, tourist attraction. Uh, a lot of people stay there and all that stuff and it it's supposed to be like one of the finest spots in New England and all that stuff to just enjoy and relax. And the character has never felt the need to explore, to go out and see the world. And I find that extremely relatable for everybody that has dreamt and wanted uh, more out of their lives and want to go out and do all these things but you're faced with the harsh reality of life and you can't do it and all that stuff. Trust me, we've all been there. So Dawn sort of represents us at the beginning of the story. And later on, as she interacts with the surfer and sort of humanizes the character through her interactions, she's a little bit naive. She doesn't really know anything about the cosmos and all that stuff. None of us would. And uh, a part of the charm of the story, aside from the art, is that we're seeing the... the cosmic uh, tapestry, if you will, through her eyes as well. And the way that she's uh, naming, for example, uh, Surfer's board, that was actually one of my favorite parts in the book. Surfer always says, to me, my board, or whatever. And she thinks he's saying, uh, to me. So the board is called to me. I thought that was a pretty clever joke. And it's stuff like that that brings a unique charm to the series that is uh, wholeheartedly needed. I didn't necessarily want to read this operatic adventure in space and all that stuff. I wanted that cosmic exploration through the eyes of uh, a, a regular person having fun and discovering new things. Not necessarily someone that's trained in all of this like uh, Norrin Rad, a Silver Surfer. So eventually, um, the characters, uh, they're intertwined because of the Empiricon thing and the mission that he set out to do. We find out that it is not what it seems to be, and throughout the entire series, the story keeps progressing in a way where every single detail that you see relates to something later on, or it calls back to something at the beginning of the book. I really, really like that. Like. It's a very vast story with dozens of characters, but at the end of the day, it's a very small story. Everything comes back to fruition. Everything returns to where it started with uh, several of these characters. There is a very particular issue, which uh, if I do remember, uh, yeah, it says so right there. It was the winner of the 2016 Eisner Award for Best Single Issue. It is uh, issue 11 from uh, the first series or the second series, one of the two. Um, the way it was laid out is very special, sort of this Mobius strip, and it's a very... There's a particular way that you're supposed to read it. 
you know, you go a certain way and it's a very interactive, cool experience and just reminds me of how awesome the comic book medium is and the series embodies that. The ability to take the limitations of paper and 2D images and breathe life into it into sort of like this quasi 3D realm where you're interacting with the comic book and the actions that you take, not only while reading it, but while the physical motions and all that stuff impact the story in a subliminal or not so subliminal way. And I thought, man, this, this, this is why I love this medium, the way that the story reflects on life and reflects on these characters, but you can also interact with it, uh, the page layouts and how everything is symbolic. N forget about the Mobius issue, the whole book, I would say, is sort of like this strip where the beginning of the story, you know, we start off on this grand epic adventure and throughout the way, we see a lot of characters and we see a lot of small hints and sort of Easter eggs, if you, if you will, and callbacks to certain other things within the book, where at first you're like, okay, that, that's a little bit weird, but as the story progresses, the snowball keeps getting bigger and bigger, and it all comes back uh, to that point of origin when we first started reading this story. It's like this full, epic, beautiful concert of emotions that happen where you have a character meeting somebody for the very first time who's very naive and does not know how to progress forward all her life all that she knows is that little piece of island in new england or, or bay if you will and suddenly she gets thrusted into this world uh this massive universe uh, meeting uh super villains and meeting uh the freaking uh, Galactus and all these other uh, wonderful characters in the Marvel Universe. Uh, hell, even they do, they even do a tie-in for Secret Wars and that was really well done. You don't have to read Secret Wars at all to completely understand what's happening, but if you've read it, you can appreciate the event a little bit more because if when you're talking about the destruction of the multiverse, this is something that this book would have to tackle as well. And it does so in a pretty dramatic way that I was not expecting. I really love that part. I love the idea of, like I said, this, or like the kids are saying, this Hoovian adventure, I guess, with these two uh, characters. One is an overpowered cosmic being experiencing things, not, on, not necessarily for the first time, but experiencing similar things in new eyes. The way that Dawn is able to bring out the curiosity of a former astronomer who thinks he has, he has seen everything in the universe, but is seeing things for the very first time through the lens of uh, a character, in this case Dawn, who has never experienced all these things and isn't necessarily awed by every single thing. There are re some really cool planets there are some really cool characters we meet on, and I mentioned it twice now. Eventually, it all comes back. It all comes back together. There's a time travel. There's alternate dimensions. There are just weird, wacky planets. There are some really emotional and traumatic explorations of dealing with grief and loss, the repercussions of what we do in life when we mess up, when we screw up and how we atone for those sins, but not necessarily feeling the guilt and, and, and blame of what happened, because you can't let that drag you down forever. So the book I thought was really fun, really clever, beautifully drawn. I loved the drawing so much. The art is so poppy and vibrant and just great to look at. And it has that emotional punch, that emotional gut punch that you want in a story like this. Very rarely do we get a comic book series, especially of the big two, where the ending, you're completely satisfied. You don't need to read anything else from the after this book. You're, this is all 30 something, all 30 issues here are uh, all you need to really appreciate it and become a fan of these characters. Dawn is extremely relatable. She's extremely cute and smart, witty, and just uh, real. She's a real character, same as uh, Norrin Rad, Silver Surfer, somebody that I thought was not necessarily boring, but, you know, a bit overly dramatic with the whole uh, 
Thor in space act, if you will. <laughs> That's just a little joke. Don't get upset, guys. Uh, but I, I found him much more relatable and fun. Yeah, it's not the most complicated cosmic story, if you will. But at the same time, I beg to differ because the things that this book does when you read the whole thing, it can leave a long lasting impression that Dan was able to take these characters on a route that they've never been through. And the weight of what one person can do for another can be really, really impactful. I loved it, especially at the end, those final three, two issues. There is some beautiful writing in there. It is a beautiful story and you just feel complete. It's a very bittersweet, uh, beautiful ending in my opinion and easily one of the best modern Marvel stories that you can read. I wholeheartedly recommend Silver Surfer. If you can get the Omnibus or if you can get the trade paper bags, whatever you want, you're gonna have a fun time, man. This is completely reader friendly. It barely crosses over with anything, just uh, a Secret Wars. And overall, it, just a really fun view at the cosmic side of Marvel, which is one of my favorites. It is a rich tapestry of concepts, of ideas, of just uh, straight up alien planets that get explored in a nice, fun and beautiful way. This was an awesome experience and I wholeheartedly recommend it. In my honest opinion, like I just said, easily one of the best uh, modern Marvel reads that you're gonna have. Uh, so yeah, do do check it out. I probably left some things that I wanted to mention, but overall, I didn't want to spoil things, just give you my overall thoughts and feelings about this book and what I thought about it. Uh, but yeah, just a fantastic experience. Guys, have you read Silver Surfer? Let me know down below. If not, let me know what is your favorite cosmic Marvel read. Thank you so much. Uh, we're welcoming 2019. I've already put up videos, but this is the first, first uh, book review in 2019. So thank you so much for the support. Let's make this a hell of a year. Uh, we're switching things up. We're doing things a little bit different this time around. But hopefully you guys stick around and you like, comment, and keep subscribing to We Can Geek Them. You can share this content or you can like me on your favorite social media platform. Either way, I love talking with you guys. Hopefully you stick around because, uh, uh, yeah, we're, uh, I gotta go. And I uh, will catch you on our next video. Thank you.